saga and uh, I have a bunch of questions here to, to answer. Um, the first one, how long have you been narrating audiobooks? How many titles? Well, I started in 2008 and I was full-time in 2012, so I've lost count. I think it's about, it's got to be above 300 at least, 300 bucks I'd say, some in around 300. How did, I, how did I break into audiobook narration? Well, my ending up with this career was kind of unconventional. I was um, studying fine art at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. And uh, the studio building was right around the corner from a company called Recorded Books, who are a wonderful audiobook pr production company. And I got a part-time job there writing copy. They needed somebody to write some write copy. It was really handy. It was around the corner from the studio, so I could go paint, go around to the studio, do some work, then go back to the studio on the other street and paint. And after about a year, I began to think, I could do this. And I started to pester my boss. And my boss eventually let up after at least a year of me nagging her. She let me do a little picture book. Um for kids. Uh, it was about 10 pages and it kind of snowballed from there. It really did. Um, just got lucky, I guess. Um, so in the Soul Saga, I play two roles. I play John Spaulding, the fighter pilot, and I play also um, Edward McCarran, who is the wayward heir of the McCarran Industries. And uh, what connects me to this character's journey, this in particular Ed's, um, what con connects me to any character's journey really is how they change. How a character change really excites me, and it um, it's it's something I really like to embody. It's uh, it's um, it's very satisfying to do that, to be able to be one person at this particular time, and then have that person go through. A bunch of stuff and then become this other person and so with Ed that was very 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 uh, strong I think. Um, what advice would I like to give to the characters? Well I don't think I'm going to answer that one because it might sound like I'm giving advice to the author and it also more importantly I might be a spoiler for those of you who haven't uh, listened to the book yet so I'm going to skip that question. Um, what interested me most about the Saul Saga book one? Well, what I really loved was the way all of the different stories kind of weaved together around this momentous event um, and how they either directly or indirectly affected that. that. And uh, just by certain things happening at certain times, I thought that was really, really, really um, interesting. And um, yeah, and it also lends itself to this... Um, bigger epic that seems to be sort of like about to begin and I'm really excited to see how it goes. Um, the next question is, without revealing too much, do I have a favourite scene to narrate? Yes, I do. It was the last scene with John Spaulding, the fighter pilot. I'm not going to say what happened, but it's pretty shocking and I really enjoyed it, but it was a real shocker when I first read it. Uh, okay, so what helps me when I'm preparing to read a book like this? Well, what helps me when I prepare, try to prepare any book is with the characters is um, I try to imagine how they look, what, what their face looks like in particular. That really helps me um, uh, get an idea about how they sound. If you imagine, if you imagine anybody you kind of tangentially know or somebody... You, you see in the street and you see their face, you can kind of get an idea of how their voice is going to be. And so that, that really helps me. I really consciously try to try to imagine characters' faces. Uh, what sneaky thing do I do in the booth that you know would weird people out? No, I don't narrate naked. But I do do something that's not sneaky, but it kind of is weird a bit. Um, I use this thing. to warm up. It's called a bone prop and they don't make them out of bones anymore, thank goodness. It used to be a chicken, part of a chicken, chicken, chicken neck, I think. Anyway, you stick this between your teeth 
and then you try to talk with this around you, uh, around your, uh, you try to talk around it, is what I'm trying to say. So as you can hear, it's not really um, conducive to talking, but what it does is it try it, it kind of uh, um, w w loosens up your muscles here and your jaw so that when you take it out, you can speak more clearly. And in my, when I'm not doing my d day job, I am a terrible uh, slur, slurrer and speaker in general. So, and this definitely helps me get in, get focused. And in particular, what I do is I try to read something hard. Right now, I don't have it actually to hand, but I am reading uh, Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar's account of his uh, um, conquering of Gaul, which isn't, isn't pretty. Anyway, if I was to be a fruit or a veggie, what would it be and why? Well, I would be a potato, of course, because you could do anything with a potato. Think of all the things that a potato can be. Potato flour, mash, there's tons of stuff. Fries, of course. And so what's my go-to favorite catchphrase or saying? Uh, sometimes I like to say before I get to reading, I like to preface it by saying, and a truer word was never said, and then I just start reading. And a truer word was never said. Thank you for listening.